Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back to your daily crypto news and analysis. And today we're going to be talking about Ripple and XRP as well as the vast majority of crypto and finance. And uh, let's just dive in and let's start off strong with this tweet here about Russia to utilize crypto exchanges to settle cross-border transactions. How comical is it now that this is sort of like the norm when we've been talking about cross-border transactions and settlement of cross-border transactions for so long on this channel centered out on Ripple and XRP. Uh, we've been talking about it around crypto and how crypto will play a, a vital role in the global evolution of our financial system. And now it is essentially becoming a reality. This to me is very exciting um it's kind of right on par with what we have been addressing a lot of people have have been asking about you know if this is good or bad news um i actually look at it as a very very good thing because this is this is like an accelerant for the u.s you know to get their things together and finally like come to a realization that like hey we need to move pretty quick on this um now of course you know, we have speculated in the past on if like the U.S. with their lawsuit against Ripple is to kind of slow it down so that the uh, the banking giants and the financial leaders within the U.S. around the banking system, and the traditional system could kind of catch up and create these infrastructures to utilize crypto and you know to utilize Ripple. We don't know. Right. We we honestly don't know until things are actually, you know, put in put in place and, you know, set in stone because we could speculate all day and we could spend hours and hours and hours speculating. But ultimately, nobody really knows where things are fully headed around what the U.S. is going to do with crypto yet. Um, but to me, long term, I believe that crypto is going to be a crucial piece of the global financial system. I have zero doubt about that. And I think that these announcements like Russia utilizing crypto exchanges to settle cross-border transactions solidifies that. And within this announcement, we do see a few things. So scrolling down. Russia has long been framing its cryptocurrency strategy in the country. Earlier in April, Russia's finance minister spoke about a new payment system. Cryptocurrencies will be part of this new payment system. I believe that crypto will be part of the global new financial system, which is underway. I think that a lot of what we are seeing around the evolution of payments right now is kind of centering it out in a way to actually incorporate uh, digital currencies, cryptocurrencies, um, CBDCs, you know, whatever you want to call it, stable coins too. It's, it's right on par with that. And I think that we are seeing an evolution of this. And this is something that we have been watching for for so long around what Russia is doing with cryptocurrency as well, because it's kind of setting things in, in place for the U.S. to kind of streamline their initiatives. Again, we don't know if the U.S. has plans. We don't know what the U.S. is doing. I've talked about MTech with uh, the U.S., with even Hedera. I've talked about things happening with, uh, with uh, Ripple, actually. There's a lot of things that we could talk about, but we don't know for certain 100% what's actually happening within the U.S. But we do see down here. Now, according to the latest report, a Russian media publication, the authorities are ditching plans for the creation of a cryptocurrency exchange. Instead, they are planning to establish a framework for the operation and establishment of crypto exchanges. Uh, the head of state Duma Committee on the Financial Market stated that instead of one national currency exchange, well-established roles for crypto exchanges would be better. And uh, we do see down here, it was stated by um Ax Aksakov, i hope that i'm saying that name right that the crypto exchange would be utilized for cross-border settlements according to the statement uh these include bypassing sanctions while at the same time complying with the rules the central bank will oversee these crypto exchanges additionally the draft law on experimental legal regimes will include the regulations we also do see down here that like they did not express support for the creation of a, a single national crypto exchange instead there was a suggestion that Basically, these legal re regulations would allow businesses to establish such uh, such platforms, which is pretty interesting uh, because this is what we've been kind of looking at within the U.S. on like, is Wall Street going to be the ones that are providing these crypto exchanges? Are they going to be the ones that are, you know, custodians of crypto? And uh, this is why I said, like, it's very beneficial for Ripple to get into the crypto custody game because I would trust them rather than Wall Street, of course. But yeah, there's a lot of discussions around if crypto exchanges are going to be around in the future or not we don't know there's a lot of discussions around regulations within crypto exchanges are they going to get killed off by those regulations we don't know um but this is this is something that i've been following with russia around cross-border transactions with crypto going a little bit back to september of last year russian officials approved use of crypto for cross-border payments i just recently included this in a video talking about what the u.s is going to do um as more and more nations like this actually move forward on crypto payments and digitizing their overall payment system um and we do see 
that according to a Thursday report said that the government department has agreed on the whole with the central bank over a rule that would let residents send cross-border payments using cryptocurrencies. This is, of course, giving them access to digital wallets. Uh, the policy generally describes how to acquire cryptocurrency, what can be done with it, and how it can or cannot be settled with it in the first place in cross-border settlements. So yeah, I mean, like, this is pretty big, and um, we do see now that people are open, uh, opening crypto wallets outside the Russian Federation, it is necessary to do this in Russia with entities supervised by the central bank, which are required to comply with AML and KYC. So yeah, I mean, like, this is going to continue to be a big narrative, in my opinion, uh, going forward. What's kind of comical about this is that for the longest time, we've been hearing reports about, you know, we need to ban crypto, we need to ban crypto. One of them is uh, China, which I'll get to here in a second. But we do see over here as well, uh, Russia moving forward with crypto international settlement experiment. This goes back to April of uh, of this year. So this is what they were referencing over here. I'm um, talking about that April discussion. Yeah, I mean, like, there's a lot of talks about crypto payments within Russia, uh, crypto settlement around cross-border payments. We know that Russia was utilizing crypto for trade as well uh, and trade settlements. You know, there's so much happening around crypto and the adoption of crypto in a lot of these areas like Russia and even China now. Um, and it's only going to continue to be that big, you know, push towards how can we innovate with these? How can we innovate outside of US based systems like SWIFT, for an example? Because a lot of these nations, they don't want to utilize the dollar anymore. They are already kind of going full de dollarization globally. Um, and it's only going to continue to streamline this. And I think that this is going to push us into that age of, you know, digital currencies and cryptocurrencies and you know stable coins cbdc's you name it um but also over here we do see from cz binance which we did report on this this was big because like i said china was one to constantly say hey we're banning crypto we're banning crypto or you know getting rid of it um india was also another one if you were around during the last couple years going even back to 2020 and 2021 which i'm sure a lot of you were here during that you already know this narrative around hey we, we need to ban crypto um but nonetheless cctv china central television just broadcast a crypto it's a big deal the chinese speaking communities are buzzing historically coverages like these led to bull runs obviously i'm not going to sit here and say hey this is the the bull run starting or anything like that but i will say um yeah i thought it was pretty big that china was moving forward on crypto but this also comes weeks after this win for crypto as china's supreme court approves its uh use to settle debts like we're now seeing crypto um being centered out on for settlement you know this is something that we've been talking about for so long on how crypto alleviates a lot of the pain points around settlement around anything it could be you know payments it could be debts it could be you know anything that has value tied to it you could sell settle it and ultimately have that value moved instantly like this is a big deal now also outside of china and russia and what's going on with them tranglo so tranglo announced a massive announcement and uh it's official we are excited to welcome out and sorry uh financial to the tranglo connect family a single connection to the world of seamless cross-border payments and uh by the way this got announced uh yesterday or two days ago on the 28th 20 days beforehand on may 8th ripple expanded into the middle east deepens commitment with new office and brings annual global conference to to uh dubai this was big and you know what's funny about this it's because of the regulatory environment within these areas but first off, we do see Ripple has long focused on serving customers around the world with over 90% of the company's business outside the US. The Middle East and North Africa, MENA region is a key market for the company with around 20% of all, all RippleNet customers such as Saab, Qatar National Bank, Lulu Financial Holdings, Al Ansari Exchange, and RackBank based here. Over half of Ripple's MENA payment volume consists of cross-border payments such as remittances from the UAE, Bahrain, and Saudi Arabia to India. In 2020, the company chose the DIFC as the location for its MENA headquarters due to Dubai's innovative forward regulations, expansive network, and reputation as a leading global financial center. And uh, we even do see them mention that down here as well. Dubai is playing an important part in shaping the world's future economy me by demonstrating truly visionary leadership the emirate has positioned itself as an existing fintech hub that is embracing crypto and blockchain technologies to bring innovative and foreign investment into the space and of course they do mention on-demand liquidity utilizing xrp um they're they're even saying like billions of dollars have been transacted to and from mina customers through on-demand liquidity since the launch and of course they are focused on that 156 trillion dollar market in terms of cross-border payment flows and uh, this is a big one, right? Obviously, it's a, it's a big market that they're expanding into. And if we actually go over here to the Tranglo announcement, 
we do see that um you know they have over 230 branches serving 3 million customers and processing over 130,000 transactions daily this is a very large market for them and uh we do see that they reached the historical mi milestone earlier this year when it was listed on the dubai financial market racing 210.5 million in an initial public offering favorably received by investors um the strategic collaboration part of Tranglo's middle east expansion program will boost Tranglo's presence in the uae which is the second largest market for outbound uh, remittances globally the second largest market that's huge and um if we do see down here so they do kind of go into a little bit but uh here's something very interesting world bank data showed that outward remittances from the uae stood at a whopping 47.54 billion dollars in 2021 it's so very large remittances from the uae recorded double digit growth in 2022 and are forecasted to increase steadily this year as 66 percent of the gulf country residents are sending more money back to support their families saddled with increasing living expenses post covid 19. uh so yeah this is huge and we do see a quote here from the ceo I'm excited about the collaboration with Al Ansari. I'm confident that the partnership will improve the cross-border payment experience in the UAE and by extension, the GCC region. Welcome Al Ansari to Tranglo Connect and supercharge your growth via our technology infrastructure and Ripple's decentralized payment solution. I mean, come on. What more do you need um, in, in, in terms of like understanding that XRP is crucial to this? Ripple's decentralized payment solution xrp is decentralized xrp is part of their payment solution and when you look at a tranglo i'm going to go into tranglo connect here in a second you'll see exactly why i'm so bullish about this with uh xrp the partnership between alan sorry exchange and tranglo is a significant step forward in our journey towards transforming the cross-border remittance landscape in the uae with the uae being the world's uh, second largest market for outbound uh, remittances this move will enable us to meet the growing demands of our customers and enhance their remittance experience through cutting edge technology and innovative solutions we look forward to working closely with jackie and the entire tranglo team and leveraging our ex expertise to, to deliver greater value sorry and um here we have tranglo helps financial institutions and businesses pay through tranglo connect its proprietary cross-border payment solution it seamlessly integrates payout and partner services unifying the end-to-end -end payment process with direct api access with tranglo connect companies can make payments to over 30 countries reliably and securely and focus on the fact that this is helping financial institutions and businesses aka b2b transactions that's 150 trillion dollars of that 156 trillion dollar market around cross-border payments and when we look at tranglo connect so at first you don't really see much you see you know their 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 network expansion what they're doing with this um you you also see a few of the the players that are utilizing this but then down here is where things start getting interesting and if you continue to scroll down it's like at the end of the page which most people don't even scroll down to see you'll see that maximize your your liquidity increase your cash flow with ripples on-demand liquidity by harnessing the power of blockchain we can help you lower operational costs and free up working capital when you go to the learn more tab and you look under you know tranglo this is why we've been so bullish on tranglo and why i think that tranglo is a significant domino effect partnership of ripples remember ripple owns i think it's what 60 percent stake in tranglo um we do see down here like why on-demand liquidity Ripple's on-demand liquidity eliminates costly pre-funding so the money stays in your hand. Even wider network gain access to Tranglo and Ripple. Instant payments using XRP as the bridging currency is a true game changer. No more waiting for you and your customers. And then down here, they do mention uh, Omnipay, but then how on-demand liquidity works with Tranglo. And the entire process is utilizing XRP and even XRP wallet accounts remittance licensees xrp uh wallet account um it first starts down here though so remittance license it goes towards ripple and this can either go to uh well this first i should say goes to remittance licenses xrp wallet account then it goes to tranglo's usd crypto exchange usd to or xrp to usd and then from here we go to step four which is tranglo singapore and then this is where you get the invoice for that as well the entire process includes XRP, XRP wallets. I mean, this is very significant. I'm very happy about this. And again, like these are the partnerships that I personally love when you have, you know, on-demand liquidity and XRP 
exposed through a partnership of Ripple's with another company like Tranglo. This is also why I said like a lot of Ripple's partnerships are sort of like this, where you will have on-demand liquidity exposed to a network of networks, or if you will, a network of other companies and institutions and businesses. I'm very excited about this. And as we do see Tranglo expand and expand and expand, it only gets more and more bullish for on-demand liquidity and XRP because Ripple is exposing on-demand liquidity and XRP through these partnerships. And I'm so damn happy to see this. Let me know what you guys think though, down in the description below. As always up to you all, have a beautiful day or a beautiful night wherever you guys are in this beautiful world. This has been Nick. Peace out guys.